Okay, welcome to lesson three of investigating z-scores. Now, what we looked at in the previous lessons is what is a z-score. A z-score is a standardization of any data where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. So if you had a z-score, a positive z-score, you would be above the mean. If you had a negative z-score, you'd be below the mean. What we also did was we looked at how that could be useful. And what you're going to want to have is a z-score table. You can Google it and find z-score table. And you're going to want a z-score table in front of you because what a z-score table does is it tells you what percent of data is below a certain a certain z-score. Okay, uh, we're going to get practical finally. Um, so we've looked at a number of things. This first example is quite guided. The next examples are a little bit more difficult. Um, so first question says this: IQ tests are used to measure a person's intellectual capacity at a particular time. IQ scores are normally distributed, so they follow this symmetrical bell curve, where most people are close to the mean, uh, with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So you'll see here that I've labeled uh, the normal distribution already with a mean of 100 and standard deviation of 15. So the first question would be, if a person scores 119 on an IQ test, what is his z-score? <clears throat> so let's say that you scored 119. 119 is roughly here. I'm going to estimate the z-score first of all. So z-scores, again, I'm going to standardize this. Z-scores would have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. So if I was to estimate the z-score here, I would estimate that the z-score is somewhere between 1 and 2 standard deviations above the mean. And it's closer to 1, so I would estimate that the z-score is maybe, I don't know, 1.2. Okay. What we can now do is actually use a formula to find out your z-score. And you'll see where this is useful in a little bit. So the z-score for this particular student, so the number of standard deviations he is above the mean, would be his data value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So that would be 19 divided by 15. And the z-score there would be approximately 1.27. So my estimate was pretty good. That was part A. Uh, now here's the next part, and why z-scores are useful is because we can find out part B, which says, what percent of the population has a lower IQ than him? So if I was to estimate, this here would be 50%. <clears throat> this here is another 34%. And I would estimate that maybe this little portion here is a little bit of 13.5, so maybe another, I don't know, 4%. Okay, if I add those, I would estimate, again, this is my estimate for this question, I would estimate that 50 plus 34 plus 4, which is 92%, I'm going to guess that he is smarter than 92% of the population, or his IQ is, uh, there's 92% of people lower than him. But where is this useful in the uh, z-score table is we can actually find an exact answer. So if I look for a z-score of 1.27 in my z-score table, which I'll do, so it's a positive z-score, and I'm going to look for 1.27. So here's 1.2, here's 0 0.07, and if I do that, I'll find out that it's 0 0.8980. So that means, so 0 0.8980, that means that there's 89.80% of people below him as far as IQ goes. Uh, what percent of the population has a higher IQ? Well, if 89.8 is above him, then you should be able to assume that if you took that away from 100, you would have your correct answer. So that would be roughly 10.20% of people have an IQ above him. Now, if you're interested... This is not in any way any type of advertising. If you're interested to see where you fall in IQ and what percent of people are above or below you, uh, you can Google search IQ test. It says there's IQtest.com. I have not taken this test, and I have no idea if it's accurate whatsoever. And they probably want your money, would be my guess. But there is an IQ test that you can take online to see where your IQ is. You can find out what your Z-score is and how many, what percent of people are below you as far as that goes. Um, but again, be warned. All right, we're going to do one more question. <clears throat> and again, you can pause this stuff whenever you want to. This is going to take some problem solving. Number two says this. Running shoes lose their shock absorption after a mean distance of 640 kilometers. So if I was to place this data on here, 
So running shoes, they lose their shock absorption after 640 kilometers with a standard deviation of 160. So if I went up by 160s, that would be roughly like this, and down by 160s would be roughly like this. Okay, so that kind of looks like what the shoes look like, and above it is the Z scores. <clears throat> so the next part says this, Zach is an elite runner and wants to replace his shoes at a distance when only 25% of people would replace their shoes. At what distance should he replace his shoes? This question has partially been done for you already, so you get a sense of it. Here's roughly 25% below, um, below where he wants to replace his shoes. So if I was to estimate, it's going to be a lot more difficult when we get more practical with this, but if I was to estimate that somewhere close to 480, and between 480 and 640. Uh, I'm going to guess that it's roughly 510 kilometers. I don't know. Okay, we're going to see out when he wants to replace his shoes. So uh, the way we could do that is, first of all, maybe find out what Z score is related to 25%. So since we're looking for 25%, we're going to look at a negative Z score table and 25%. So if you have your z-score table here, go to the negative side, and we're going to search for, the search is on for 25%, or in other words, 0 0.25 on the inside. We're looking for percents. That way we can find out uh, the z-score related to that percent. So 25% is roughly here, and that looks like it would be related to a z-score of negative 0.6 Seven. So the z-score is negative 0 0.67, okay, which may be useful. <clears throat> so we know that the z-score is equal to negative 0 0.67. What we can actually do now is, because we know the z-score and we're looking for a data value, we can use the z-score formula in a reverse manner. So I know that the z-score is negative 0 0.67. I don't know the data value but I do know the mean is 640, and I also know that the standard deviation is 160. <clears throat> so we're just going to solve this equation. The easiest way to do that is to multiply both sides by 160. So we're just doing some inverse operations or algebra. That'll cancel these out. <clears throat> so negative 0 0.67 times 160 is roughly negative 107.2. So at this point, we have negative 107.2 is equivalent to x minus 640. And the last step of algebra is to add 640. So we would have that the distance, or the data value, where he wants to replace his shoes would be roughly 532.8, which is close to our estimate, a little bit of ways off, 530. 2.8 kilometers is when Zach wants to replace his shoes. So there's the usefulness of statistics and Z scores.